All right, welcome everyone to our A to J Author New User Webinar. This is Jessica Frank, A to J Author Program Manager. So today's topic that we're going to cover is converting A to J 4 guided interviews to A to J Author 6. We're also going to talk a little bit about the known differences between A to J 4 and A to J 6. I'm going to demo our new report tab feature and a new tool, a citation tool. And then I'll talk a little bit about what's going to happen in 2018. Just went over the agenda there. The thing that I'm adding to these new user webinars um, for the last couple of months is an authoring tip. This is something that has come up uh, with authors that I talk to over the past month, so I try to bring it to the larger audience. So this month's tip is going to be the new citation tool, which I'll show you near the end of this presentation. So let's talk a little bit about how to convert. It's really simple. So the whole talk about having to convert and move your interviews from A to J4 to A to J6, um, and before we get started on how to convert, just some uh, tips on why you'd want to convert or why you need to convert soon. A to J4 was written in Flash. It's almost 10 years old now at this point. While the software is still solid, Flash itself is not um, as widely available on the internet as it was. Many browsers are turning it off automatically. Um, Edge and Chrome have both said they're going to be phasing it out in the next year, year and a half, um, but right and not supporting it at all. But right now they're making it very difficult for end users to turn back on. It is being turned off automatically and hidden in the settings in a lot of browsers. A to J6 also has, um, while well, not having any of the issues of Flash, because it's written in JavaScript and HTML, it also has a mobile viewer. So our mobile viewer allows your end users to use their guided interviews or to access guided interviews on their phones, on their tablets, any computer that has this modern uh, browser. So that really expands the reach of your interviews as well. A to J4 is still supported and available on Law Help Interactive and on our website, a2jauthor.org, but there are no bug fixes that are being pushed to A to J4 anymore. We released A to J6 over a year and a half ago. Um, we've been in production on Law Help Interactive for six months, and so A to J6 is the software that is currently being supported. So quickly, um, how to convert. I'll, I'll go through these steps and then I'll just show you live how to do it. So first thing you need to do is get a copy of your A to J4 interview. If you host it on Law Help Interactive and that's where your A to J4 is currently running, you can go to the contributor portal, which I'll show you, um, download it, and then take it to our website and convert it. You can get it off an old laptop. Maybe the local copy was stored on somebody's old machine in a share drive. Some colleague has it in their email. Wherever you need to get it, wherever it's running live, you need to get it from, from that source. You then need to log into a to j author.org. Make sure you have an author account. So setting up an author account is free. It's relatively easy. Um, it takes a couple of steps. Um, and when you first go to the website for the very first time, you click author. It'll ask you to log in. And if you don't have an account, it'll say, um, I want to make an account or I want to sign up. And you follow the steps there. And it requires an email going out to you to make sure you're not spam. Once you confirm you're not spam, you get a web form that asks who you are. And at that point, I approve your account because A to J author is available for free to any um, nonprofit, legal aid, law school, court for non-commercial purposes. So I just uh, verify that who you are, um, who you say you are is who you are, and then you have an author account. Then you click uh, Upload A to J Guided Interview at the top of your screen when you're in A to J Author. You select the file you want from your local computer, and you're done. Once you upload it, it's converted. Now, the little asterisk there is to make sure you check your logic, you run through your interview a couple of times, you make sure that the law behind your interview is still good, the form hasn't changed, income requirements haven't changed, that kind of thing. And then it's ready to upload to either LHI or your own server if you are self-hosting. So to make a lot of words quick and easy to see, I'm going to exit out of the slide deck. I'm going to go over to Law Help Interactive. I am logged into production LHI into, the, into my account 
under the um, contributor portal, I searched for my name. My maiden name is how my account was created. And I'm going to pick an A to J that I uploaded when I was helping to teach a course on A to J at Chicago Kent. So I can see that this is an A to J 4. I know this because the icon has our little A to J symbol with the little avatar that was an A to J 4. The new A to J's have our, uh, our circle and has a little finger there, like a touch. Um, it's a little hard to see here on the screen, but those two different icons can tell you right away that this is an A to J4 when the little avatar is present. This is an A to J6 when the little hand is present. So I'm going to download this A to J. Click the download button. This is downloading to my local hard drive here. Okay, once it's done, I'm going to go back into A to J author. And I'm going to close the console. I'm going to click Upload. Now I'm logged in. I went to a to jauthor.org. I hit Author, Run, because I'm logged in. Took me to this landing page. This is the Interviews tab. Now I click Upload. I'm going to sort by today. I downloaded this once already this morning, but here's the one right now that I just did. Click Open. And just that easy, an A to J4 is an A to J6. So A to J drops you to the point in which your interview is now stored in your list of interviews. Mine's very long because I spend all day in it, but um, your list should be relatively short. You double click on it to open it. Here's my entire interview. For purposes of ensuring that it's a good conversion, I'd want to go to the All Logic tab. I don't have any logic, so score on that one. I'm good. Many of your interviews may not contain logic at all. Um, if you had logic, all the logic statements would be here. If any of the boxes were red or had little error warnings, you'd want to address those. If I were doing this for real, I would go to the About tab. I would make sure that this is the avatar I still wanted. If you were here last month, you know that you can have female or male avatars, and now you can have a range of skin tones and a range of hair colors as well. So I'd make sure that this is the avatar I still want. I'd go to the revision history and make some notes about how it was updated, 2017. I'd add um, any updated information about myself here under the author section, update a feedback email. That's one of the things that's actually come up in the last couple of weeks. Um, our A to J viewer feedback, so it's the option for end users to click a button at the top of the interview that says send feedback. If you click this allow send feedback and you add an email, what it does is the email comes to you, whatever email address you put here, and to us um, so that I can see if there's any issues with the software itself that needs to be addressed. So I've been getting a bunch of these emails lately that have been bouncing out of old email accounts for the authors. So either the author was a consultant and left, was an employee who no, who no longer works at the legal aid, or the legal aid updated their, their web server and that email address is no longer valid. So that's one of the important things that's come up in the last week or so um, that authors need to update the emails for their, for their contact. I'd also run through preview to make sure that it looks the way I still expect it to look, run through the entire interview, make sure it gets to the end, that it's doing everything it's supposed to do, and making sure that it's still valid law, as I mentioned. But that's really how easy it is. At this point, it's an A to J6. If I went to the Publish tab, I could publish right now to LHI Production or LHI's Rebuild QA, which is their staging server. I could download the zip file to share it with somebody else, or I could just download the A to J, which doesn't contain um, any of the external files if I wanted that. So just like that, it's converted. So known differences, we've covered this part of the web webinar before um, a couple of months ago, but I thought it was a good point to bring out for any of you that haven't watched that webinar and weren't there with us. So there's a couple of differences between A to J4 and A to J6. We tried to replicate A to J4 as best as possible, but some of the things um, aren't possible to replicate in A to J6, like the map. The map was beautiful. Flash does a great job of uh, giving visual representations of the questions that um, have proven very difficult to replicate in uh, the cloud-based authoring. 
So some of those things we can't change. Um, some of the things we've learned over time are better ways to do it. Um, we used to be very permissive in A to J4, and it allowed for a lot of bad authoring. That's not to say the, the um, questions themselves were bad or anything. the authors did anything wrong, but we allowed for some sloppy programming. So what we're trying to do is tighten that up a little bit in A to J6 to ensure that any of conversions in the future, because technology changes, will be easier because the um, interviews themselves will be um, more alike than they were in A to J4. So a couple of these things we'll go through. Phone number and social security formatting. We used to force formatting onto phone numbers and social security numbers when they came out of the end user's answers. So there'd be, for example, the phone number would have um, three little boxes, three digits, three digits, four digits. The social security number would be 324. Um, and then we would force logic or force formatting onto those on the back end. So there may be some hot docs templates that, that um, are dependent on that formatting and expecting it for how to parse it out onto however your hot docs form looked like. So for example, if your hot docs form um, has like individual boxes for each digit, you need to do a little work because now A to J doesn't force any formatting on it. It's a simple open text field for your end user. We do give gray suggested formatting for your end user, but we don't force it on them. Um, so if Hot Docs is expecting it, you're going to need to check out Bart Earle's Hot Docs computation to parse phone numbers and social security numbers. It was on the February 2017 call um, from Pro Bono Net on their um, monthly webinar in February. So the URL is there if you need to check that out. And he did a great job of parsing it out and showing how you can pull what we're now handing out of A to J into however you need it in Hot Docs. Navigation in A to J4, you used to be allowed to turn navigation off. Some authors wanted to do that in cases of repeat loops or nested repeats, or wanted to control how an end user moved through the interview a little bit more. We, are, we have disabled that for, um, for the purposes of making it more uniform. We want interviews to look alike from one to the other. We also handled some of the back end technical issues that authors were turning off navigation to avoid. So um, authors had said they were turning off navigation because A to J4 wasn't handling ordinals correctly. So if an end user went back, it would increase a count and increase an ordinal where it shouldn't have. So if they were really on their first child, talking about their first kid, a couple of questions, they went back, it would then think they were on their second child when they weren't. So we fixed that with navigation so it no longer uh, increases the count if the end user's already been on that page. And it also used to refire before logic. So any logic that was before the question would refire if the end user went back via the navigation buttons. It no longer does that as well. So two of the major concerns for turning off navigation, we fixed on the back end. In A to J4, we used to allow you to essentially add up different kind of variables. So here is an example of one that was actually out there in the wild. Um, they were trying to set a number variable, so number of litigants NU, to a multiple choice plus a number. So they wanted it to be 2 plus 1 equals 3. So number of defendants MC was 2, number of petitioners NU was 1. They wanted to get a number out of that. The problem is, um, in uh, HTML, it's hard um, or impossible, um, what our programmers have said, to match um, a string, which is what a multiple choice variable is, to a number variable um, and get three. What we were getting in A to J6 was 21. It was literally putting whatever was in the multiple choice next to the number instead of adding them together. So if you want three, for the example here, both variables have to be a number. So if you want to add, you have to have two numbers to add together. True and false, we used to um, actually need you to put them in quotes true. Now they're Boolean, so you don't put them in quotes when you use them in logic or in any of the buttons or the, the variable fields. Um, it's um, just true, false, by themselves, no quotes. You can do any kind of capitalization you like, lowercase t, capital R, lowercase u, capital E, um, all caps, all lowercase, anything like that, but it needs to have no quotes around them to work properly for true-false. 
In HTML, if it's in quotes, it's a string. So that's not what you want for true-false variables. I'm just going to go over this quickly because I've done a webinar on nested repeat loops. but nest, and, and they're also something that are um, not as commonly used among our authoring community. But we've made nested loops a little bit easier to handle and, and moving us towards um, natively supporting uh, two-digit or three-digit or four-digit indices within A to J. So what a loop is, it's a set of repeated questions. A nested loop is a set of repeated questions within a set of repeated questions. So for example, the outer set, the outer loop, would be information about the children, about a child, the child's name, their birth date. The inner loop would be all the addresses they've lived in for the last five years. So there may be um, infinite number of addresses that a child has lived at in five years, so that has to loop inside the larger loop of that individual child. Um, so with outer loops here, same way that, we, that you do nested repeat loops in A to J4, except you have to check this little box that says that it's nested and tell A to J what the outer loop is for that little address inner loop. It's kind of confusing if you've never done nested repeat loops before, but check out a to jauthor.org um, for a description of how to do nested loops or our YouTube channel for a video on nested loops. I see I have a question here. So another known difference between A to J4 and A to J6 is that hyperlinks and pop-ups are now blue. They used to be red, but blue is the standard uh, way that hyperlinks and pop-ups are shown on the web. Um, and so we're trying to make A to J more uniform and easier to um, handle in the code on the back end. So we're making it more up to the standards, uh, normal uh, conventions. So some authors had uh, used the word red as an example, you need to go in and change that to the word blue, or not at all. You could just say the underlined word, or here's an example, and do it, um, and show a pop-up or a hyperlink, um, instead of calling out a word or a color, because colors can always change. Speaking of hyperlinks, you need to reattach your hyperlinks. The old version save in A to J4 saved uh, the HTML for that hyperlink without a target of the new tab or window. So if you want the hyperlink, the pop-up, or the hyperlink, the URL, to open up in a new window instead of opening up in the same window as the viewer and closing the viewer, which is not good, you need to reattach it. So we had the bug in the software, the old HTML, that would just um, replace the current tab or window of the user's browser with whatever that uh, hyperlink was. So um, instead, we would like it to open in a new tab, so you have to go in and reattach those hyperlinks. Um, the destination of exit user doesn't qualify used to close out the, the, viewer, uh, the viewer altogether um, if there was no URL to redirect them or it would redirect them to that URL if, if the author had put a URL in. Now, if the author puts a URL, URL in um, to A to J author and says, if they don't qualify, send them to X website, then the viewer will close, it will send them to that website, and all will be good. If the author forgets to put in a URL, um, and the A to J doesn't know where to send the end user, the viewer um, will stay open, and the end user will get this message to tell them to close the tab and exit. So that's the, um, it for known differences between the two uh, versions of our software. A couple of tips and things to look out for when you're converting. So um, we'll talk about all of these as we go through them, but uh, hidden buttons can, say, can set values from A to J4. When you pull it into A to J6, there can be hidden buttons. Talk about how to draft logic, how you can't use Swift files anymore. Our new feature contains the expression evaluator. That should say editing, not exiting. Editing <laughs> XML directly. It's kind of ironic that the word editing is spelled wrong here. Um, and you should only be authoring on a to j author.org. So um, in the past year, year and a half, we've had different places for you to author, author dev. Um, some of you may have been on staging.a to j author. All of those uh, should not be places where you're authoring. You should only author on our production site, which is a to j author.org. 
So here is an example of hidden buttons from A to J4 that may be setting values in A to J6. So in this little GIF, what it's showing is in A to J4, I at first had um, a button that set a value. Then I decided, no, I don't want it to be a button. I want it to be a field instead. Um, so I deleted or, or changed the button type so it didn't set a value. Um, and what A to J4 did is it just hid that. It didn't delete it. It hid it and it ignored it. Um, but that's being brought into A to J6 then. And it can, um, it's showing up. So the author just has to go in and delete their mistake from A to J4. I'll let you watch this little GIF because it, um, it explains it better than I can. So this had two, uh, initially I had two buttons in the A to J4, um, like who are you, the petitioner or the respondent. And I decided I didn't actually want it to say, um, uh, to be a button. And so I changed it to a field, like pick which one you are. Um, but the value was still saved uh, in A to J4 and moved over to A to J6. All of these known differences and issues are also available on our website on a to jauthor.org. Under learn, there's a tab of uh, drop down from our tab, the learn tab, that shows um, all the known differences. So you can go in and look at these, this video as well. While you're watching that, I'm just going to check the questions. Okay, like I said, you can go in and watch uh, this GIF yourselves on our website um, later, but just check for hidden uh, values on the buttons as well that you don't intend them to be there. A tip from one of our authors here that came in through the questions was um, something else to look for that when you're converting your A to J6 is bad A to J4 logic, such as previous authors who might have used quotes around true when actually you want it to be Boolean. Um, so that's a good tip so that you might be inheriting an interview that was um, crafted by a new author or um, somebody who just wasn't that great at authoring or um, just had some issues in it. So that's always good to, to make sure when you're inheriting something to really understand the interview and clean it up as you go. So thank you for that tip. But for talking about logic and drafting logic, um, the main commands for logic are if, else, go to, set, and end if. You can also use functions like has answer, date, dollar, contains, um, any of the functions that are available within A to J, you can use them in logic. Make sure that every command is on its own line. And we have a section of our authoring guide right here, um, a to jauthor.org slash content slash advanced dash logic dash section. And you can see all about how to draft logic. But that is something in conversions that if you've never worked in A to J6, it is a difference between uh, from four and how to draft logic. Can't use Swift files anymore because they're Flash based and we don't support Flash anymore in A to J6, but you can use ping, GIF, JPEG, XML, MP3, MP4. Any of these file formats are now acceptable and LHI has a much larger upload limit than they used to with A to J4. So if you are hosting on LHI, you can now include a lot of these audio clips or video clips or images that you might not have been able to fit into the, um, I believe it was 25 megabits, megabytes um, upload limit that it was before. So this gives you a lot more freedom to include more graphical tools within A to J. We have a new function called contains. The format is here, just contains, parentheses, the variable name, comma, the string you're looking for within that variable, and close parentheses. What it does is test if anywhere within that variable is whatever you put between the quotes. So whatever string you're looking for, 
is it in the variable? And it returns a true or false. So for example, you may have a question that says, what's your problem or what's your legal issue? And someone may write a whole paragraph of text and what you're looking for is whether they mention abuse or hit or violence or something like that or landlord, whatever you're looking for that may trigger something else in your interview or need the need to dig deeper. You can search for the fact uh, for whether or not they typed some phrase or some word or some number into this variable. So it's a, it's kind of a cool new feature that you can use in A to J. Six. Our expression evaluator, it was there in A to J4. It took a while for us to get it back into A to J6, but it's there now. It is in preview mode. If you open up the variables and script window, um, it's at the very bottom. So that's what you're seeing. This is a screenshot GIF of uh, just the variables and script window open within preview. And you can do, um, you can test expressions to see if the logic ran the way you expected it to or what value is held by a var uh, what variable is holding a specific value or not. It lets you do a lot of stuff without clicking back and forth or running through an interview. You can load an answer file, check the expression evaluator, and move on from there. It's great for advanced authoring. A uh, warning about editing XML directly. Please, please, please don't do this unless you are really good at editing XML. Um, it's caused significant number of problems in the past in which authors have corrupted their entire interview and we've had to go through and scrape it and really spend a lot of time trying to fix it. Some have been corrupted so badly they can't be fixed. Um, it is not something I, I recommend for um, anyone but the very most experienced XML editors. I don't edit directly in the XML and I spend all day every day in A to J. Um, so I just don't recommend it. If you are going to edit in XML, please um, don't try and do, to, do anything like that in Word. Um, that can bring in weird formatting. Um, the one we found to have the best um, experience with, if you are looking at the XML or wishing to edit it, is Notepad++ which is avail available for free. So if you do need to edit, please be careful with the text editor that you're using. So we have a new feature in a grant for this year um, to add citation tool to A to J author to make it easier for authors in the future to um, quickly check if the law is still good that their form is based on and to help future authors who inherit guided interviews that are like, what was this person thinking when they did X in the interview? Now that A to J is 13 years old, we're um, having to deal with some old interviews. And old in interview world is like 2009, 2011. Those are old interviews at this point um, that need to be updated. So our new citation tool and our new report tool will be rolling out shortly, um, likely in the next code push next week. Um, but I'm gonna show it to you on our development server. This is just any old interview that I pulled out of my list and what this report tab looks like. So this is the report tab. You'll notice that it looks a little bit different. Here is A to J6 currently. You could either choose the full report or the transcript report. Now it just generates the full report for you and you can switch over to just the text report or the citation report. So full report shows everything that you're used to seeing, all the variables, all the questions, um, all the logic, whether there's loops, um, any buttons, any fields, any audio clips, any images that are attached to it. It has the entire interview here. If you go to the text report, you can see now that I've scrolled down, that's a little bit shorter. It only shows the text of the report. So anything that would need to be translated. So text, the question itself, learn more prompts, learn more help, the help reader, which is what is used by screen readers, um, if you have images in, in the help section, um, and any labels that would be on uh, your buttons. And if it had fields, it would also have the field labels as well. So anything that would need to be translated by um, a translator if you needed it. I can always print the current report. So this here is printing just the text report. If I went back, change it to full report, hit print, it would update it and I would have the full report to print and share. So it's just a little bit updated, cleaner version of the, the reports that you have available. It adds the citation report, 
which pulls in data from new citation fields that we added, which I'll show you. But this citation report is what, um, in the future, authors will be able to pull uh, annually every six months, every two years, whenever they um, make sure that their interviews are still good. And they'd be able to run a check on all the citations to make sure they're still good law. So not every thing that you do at A to J is going to have a, like a citation to a statute. So you're not exactly going to be able to shepherdize this. But the citation can just be straight text. Like I am uh, making the income limit 35000 because it's based on um, our organization's um, handbook as of today's date. Or you could have, I'm making it because the federal, federal poverty limit in 2017 is this, and a link to the government website that gives the federal poverty limit, um, anything like that. So it can be, it's just a text field, um, so you can put just plain straight text in it. But we're envisioning it as a way for you to put links to outside sources that you're relying on, the court document itself that you're relying on, any statutes that may be relevant, and just notes for future authors. Because we're finding that as you guys go through this conversion process, that you're left with a lot of questions of like, why did somebody do this? And they're not there to answer it, or it happened six years ago and they don't remember. So we're hoping this will be better for authors in the future. Anyway, those new citation tabs are the new citation fields. If we click on a question, the notes section is always there. That's kind of the overall notes for the question. Then we've added new fields. So text citation, this is for the text itself. We have a citation for the help section, so any notes you want to leave about why you uh, added Learn More Help. And then citations for the logic. Why did you script the logic the way you scripted it? So ho we're hoping that uh, as you as authors start going through this conversion process or making new interviews, that you start adding this logic citation in where it might be helpful in the future. So that is a new tool that we will be rolling out very shortly in the next week or so and hoping that you all will take advantage of. All right, so looking forward to 2018. Um, this is the last new user webinar of 2017, being that it's December. So our new user webinars will restart in February. They don't restart in January because sometimes that is like the first to second day of the year, um, which is holiday, or it's during our uh, TIG, now known as, now known as ITC conference, um, in which I do the A to J author and hot dogs training in conjunction with Law Help Interactive and Capstone Practice Systems. So the new user webinars restart in February, first Thursday of the month, um, and there will be a new um, GoToMeeting login series for the year, which I'll send out on Twitter and to the list um, as well in the beginning of the year. The training that I mentioned is a two-day intensive training that covers um, everything you need to know about the basics of A to J and Hot Docs. It is January 8th and 9th of 2018 in New Orleans before the ITC conference. It's filling up fast if you're interested in registering because you're going to be at the conference anyway. You might as well get another day or two in in beautiful New Orleans in January. Um, you can register on Pro Bono's website. So probono.net slash DA support um, and they'll have the training, uh, the sign up there. We are presenting at that ITC conference as well on our new analytics tool. So if you're interested in about how A to J analytics can help you build better automated documents, come see our session there. We'll also be at the uh, SRLN, Self-Represented Litigation Network, conference in February in um, San Francisco. And we'll be rolling out our A to J analytics tool and the A to J document assembly tool on Law Help Interactive in early 2018. Feel free always to email me um, at jessica at cali.org if you have problems with authoring or if you um, have questions about how to convert. If you need help converting, we have resources for that as well. So as always, thank you and um, have a great new year and see you all again in February or hopefully in January at the TIG conference. So thank you.